Hi and welcome back. Today I've added a new colour to one of my limited palettes. Um, it's a lovely colour, it's Jackson's own brand artist quality paint Cobalt Violet Deep Hue. Um, and I'm going to be trying it out by painting um, an, a sort of semi-abstract landscape. Um, one of my sort of experiments where I just uh, paint wet in wet and just see what happens. Let the paint do what it wants to more or less, just direct it a little bit. So I'm using Saunders Waterford cold press paper. It's taped to my board with ordinary decorators masking tape. Um, my board's at 45 degrees, so the paint and water will flow down the page. I'm using um, a bamboo harky brush or sort of flat brush that I found on AliExpress. I'm afraid I don't have the link, but I'm sure you can go onto AliExpress and find one. And I'm using mixtures of the Cobalt Violet Deep, Payne's Grey and Indigo and running it across the central area of the page having just wet the page all over, um, mostly the sky area and you can see the paint beginning to run down where I've wet it um, and I can then sweep some of that colour across the tape at the top with horizontal strokes and by sweeping across I can keep that wash pale and soft and even. It'll be a graduated wash as it gently drifts down the page because my board's at an angle of 45 degrees. And that will do. I just want a very quiet sky. Um, everything will be going on in the landscape where I'm just letting the paint more or less do its thing. So I can tip and tilt my board and you can see some of the paint from in the landscape is running now across the landscape down towards the bottom of the page. Um, and this is why I tip and tilt because I can get the paint to move around where I want it and it will sort of help to establish um, the layers of land and the sort of different planes in this semi-abstract landscape. I can just use the tips of this brush to lightly put in onto the wet page a few marks where I'm going to have some trees on that sort of distant um, slope. This sort of abstract or semi-abstract landscape is very much something and nothing. Um, you see what you want to see in it and I'm seeing trees, I'm seeing uh, fields, um, maybe some water maybe some snow, but for me, colour and tone and atmosphere are more important than sort of realism, as if you've watched this channel, you're probably, <laughs> probably quite, quite aware of that. So for me, I'm playing with colour, I'm playing with shapes, I'm playing with the wet in wet technique and just allowing the paint more or less to do its own thing and just helping it out here and there. This is the corner of a plastic card, or you could use the pointed end of a paintbrush or a uh, palette knife to put in, scrape through a few tree trunks and things just to cement the illusion of those being distant trees in the background. Then adding some slightly darker paint here and there, extending those tree canopies a little bit just to balance up the composition. Uh, my paper is Saunders Waterford cold press paper, 140 pound or 300 grams weight. Um, it's a quarter imperial size, that's 11 inches by 15 inches or 28 centimetres by 38 centimetres. And I've just added a bit of violet to my tree canopies. Um, I think that just, just gives them a little bit of sparkle, a little bit of pop. So I'm going to lay my board flat now so that everything can dry in the place that it is now. I don't want anything drifting down the board. And I'm going to add a few little salt blooms and blossoms across that large um, plain area in the foreground just to break that up a tiny bit. And so I've got some foreground flowers. Hopefully, if the salt does its trick, then I should get some tiny little blooms there, which will just add a bit of interest to my foreground, but without overwhelming it. 
And if we take a closer look, you can see the salt has already started to create these tiny little blooms where it sort of pushes the paint and water aside and then just leaves the white of the paper in little flower shapes. And a final touch before it dries, I'm just flicking on a bit of the cobalt violet deep hue, um, inky consistency onto over the top of those um, little salt blooms so that I get a little bit of extra violet um, to continue with the colour harmony in the foreground. And now I need to leave it to dry completely. So it's all dry and I'm really happy with the way it's, it's turned out. Um, I love this new colour. I should be using it a lot, I think, because um, I think it goes really well with my other colours. I'm brushing off any bits of salt that didn't dissolve and I'm happy with the subtle effect of salt flowers um, in the foreground. I'm not going to do any more to this. I'm going to leave it as it is. I think there's enough suggestions of detail in this painting for it to work as it does. There's enough tonal value and enough interest. There's the focal point of um, the beautiful marks and trees across the left um, that the water has, has created um, along with the paint. So I hope you enjoyed that semi-abstract landscape. I'm really impressed with this lovely purple violet colour and I should be using it a lot. So if you're looking for a purple or a violet, um, then Jackson's um, cobalt violet deep hue is really lovely and it's a great mixer with things. As you can see here, it works really well with the indigo and Payne's grey. And I've just done a sky practice using it for a stormy sky, so keep your eyes peeled for that. And it works beautifully with raw sienna, which gives it a lovely, lovely light. Because, of course, um, purple is the complementary colour to um, yellow. So it works really, really well with yellows. Um, I think if we look closely, you can see that it really is sort of something and nothing, but gives the overall impression, I hope, of an abstract landscape. So thank you so much for watching. Um, please leave us a like and subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. And thank you so much to my lovely Patreon group who support this channel. And I'll see you again soon and happy painting. Bye.